this series, we're going to utilize this acetate to paint a simple wall. And I hope you find it an interesting technique to add to your painting as well. So in each series, we're going to do something simple, very simple, like a wall or ground or grass or whatever. And then in the end, we hope to do a full painting. So come along. Let's see what we can learn. Now this applies to using gouache, which is an opaque watercolor type of paint. And it's very water soluble. That means it can be easily damaged if you drop the water on it. So you want to be very careful dealing with that. Or you can use acrylics with the same technique also. But we start by wetting our board and getting the board as evenly wet as we possibly can. And when the board is first wet, it has a very high gloss look to it. That's what I'm showing you right now. You can see it's shiny. You can see a little bit of reflectiveness on that surface. You don't want to put paint on at this stage. You want it to go to a low sheen, whereas you can tell it's damp, but it's not wet, wet. So when you put the water down, you have to give a little bit of time for it to dry. And while you're doing that, you want to go ahead and start mixing the color that you want to use on the board. And you want to make sure you have enough paint, enough pigment in that paint, because it's going to get dispersed when you lay that paint onto the board. So you need plenty of pigment. Do not be too shy to lay that pig enough pigment onto that board. So once you begin to lay in the color, you try to be as even as you possibly can and work as fast as you can because you don't want your board to dry before you finish laying the paint. Notice I'm putting my lightest possible color in and then I work towards my darker colors because you want to maintain the richness of color and the cleanness of the color early on. You don't want to dirty your nice clean areas. And the nice thing about this too is that you want rich color to come through. It's just thick enough to allow the light to bounce and hit that whiteboard and the color bounce back up. Whereas if it gets too thick, then you start, to you start to lose some of the vibrancy of your color because the light can't pass through it as, as nicely. So you start with those light colors and you work out to the darker colors generally. And again, remember to keep enough pigment. Now, my board is starting to dry, so I use an airbrush because the airbrush gives you nice, even amount of water laying on the surface. It can't be too thick. So it breaks it up into smaller droplets. That's very even on the board. And that way I can continue to work on a wet surface. And so long as my surface is wet, I can lay in additional colors, uh, a variety of different things into that board and that will still represent my first pass, my first lay-in. And as long as you can keep everything in that first pass lay-in, then that's going to prevent the paint from building up too heavy and still keep a nice bounce light coming through. So finding that balance between not having it too opaque and not having it too transparent so that this has a nice translucent feel to it. That's what we want to achieve in the amount of paint we lay on that surface. Now we're going to use what is called a badger brush. And this is to help blend those colors together a little bit. 
to soften some of the brush strokes. To smooth out some of the rough laid in areas. Every once in a while, the hairs may come out of the badger brush and you have to pick them up. So that method of pushing the brush for it helps pick up those hairs. It takes a little practice, but you can get used to it. You'll see me do that again. I'm trying to pick up the loose hairs because I don't want it to dry into the paint. If it dries in the paint, it leaves a line there. So if you can pick it up while it's still damp, it's better off. So I'm checking it to make sure that that's dry. You want it to be completely dry before you go to your next stage. And now I'm using a piece of acetate. We're going to give texture to our wall. So we've established our light and our shadows. Now we're going to give some texture. Now as you give texture, you're going to lose some of that light. Now you're putting another layer of paint. And it's, it's fairly thin. It's not too thick. It's more transparent lay-in. And we're just rubbing it onto the acetate, the colors that you want. And you can vary how light or dark it is based on the amount of water you use to the pigment. If you want to be less apparent, then use more water. If you want to show up stronger and more harsher, then use more pigment. And what I'm doing is dabbing it down and letting it have its own little random accidents as I'm laying it onto the surface. And that's becoming my wall texture that I'm going to work with as I begin to give structure to the wall. So the texture is better than painting it in because sometimes when you paint it, it feels more controlled. This way, it's accidental, purposefully accidental. And then you begin to put in your bricks, your stonework. And that's what I'm doing at this point. So now I'm putting in my lines, and usually it's a little bit darker, so it can show up from my more darker color that's there. And, and my original lay-in, though, was dark. It doesn't appear so much so now that it, sh it dries lighter. So I can go a little darker with my line work. And as I'm making my line work here, it's more transparent. So the paint is not very thick at all. It's more like a watercolor transparency that I'm laying in. And I'm building the structure of my stone wall. Now we see what it looks like with the lines. Not a whole lot, but there's the basic information that's there. And now I'm about to put some shadowing as if light is from above and it's going to cast some shadows in the stone walls. So I take a little bit darker color, not quite as dark as my lines, and I have a little bit more coloration to it. And then I'll build the shadowing. And you notice I go to a little thicker brush. And again, this is more transparent. Being transparent allows still some of the texturing to come through. And some of the color to come through. Where the light is, you'll get some of that yellow coming through. Where the shadows are, you'll get some of those violet, blue-violet colors coming through.
and I also try to give it a little more warmth in the color as if maybe there's even though a shadow there's a warmer light reflecting on the bottom that kind of help plays off some of my cooler areas in the piece as well so here's what it feels like that gives it a little bit more dimensionality I want to add a little more shadowing to this and after I complete that I'm going to put some darks in and this will define the cracks in the wall a little bit more. And it will help give greater clarity to brick separation. So the darkest points that you can see between those bricks. Now our definition will become even more apparent. One of the interesting things with gouache is because it dries lighter and as each layer dries there's still room to go a little bit darker without going totally black. Now you see the more definition, you see the bricks, you see dark points. And I try not to make every line equally as dark. You pick little spots to pick out where you will accent the darks, but you don't want it everywhere. You want some things to be suggested. Now I'm going to start putting in my lights as if the light is coming from the top. That's the way we kind of get the angle ray sort of a thing. So the light is coming from the top and I'm going to define where the light is now hitting the tops of the stones. I would call it in bricks early, the stones. And the fun part too, as you do that, is the texturing that we gave to the stone, we can pick little areas to make it like crevices within the stones that catch the light as well. And this will give us even more dimensionality. Now what I also like to do is play up warm reflective lights in my shadow areas. That brings a little more color interest to the piece. And once I've finished doing my warm reflective lights, then I like to go back and deal with my shadow areas also. And I'm going to put a few more little highlights from the top in some of the areas in the light. And then I'm going to catch some cool light in my shadowed areas and that has to keep that down this brightness can't be as bright as what was in the actual light itself but this will help give us more definition for the stonework that are in the shadows and it'll help the overall piece to come together My last few touches, I'm going to go back into the crevices, those deep little crevices that were shadowed. I'm going to get my darkest possible color, almost like a blot, and give those final little bit of accents where the crevices are extra deep now. This will bring out the last little portions of detail that we need for the piece and it helps it to come together and feel like it's a complete work. So these are so subtle little steps to take to do something like stone walls, brick walls, uh, stone work on the ground, the size of buildings with texture, 
anything like that, you can use this method of the acetate to give you the texture. And it's just a matter of pulling out the lights and the darks with them to get the overall structure of what you're drawing a painting, in this case painting. And I'm giving just more touches of light in some areas, my little finishing touches, and I'm done. So what do you think? Pretty interesting, huh? Give it a try. I'd love to see it. And join me next time.